Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudabuyu playing Vanilla Minecraft 1.8.7 PC Edition and this is the eighth in a series of videos in which I conquer an ocean monument. Uh, in this video I will be demonstrating how to drain smaller rooms of the ocean monument, uh, but if you're looking for a, another part of the strategy in action, a link to the other videos in this series can be found in the description. Um, these are the uh, the configurations of the smaller rooms uh, of an ocean monument. Uh, when I say smaller rooms, uh, I mean uh, rooms that comprise either one or two units of the uh, of the ocean monument's maze. Um, there are a number of different styles of these rooms. Um, uh, many of them one units, a few of them two units, uh, and uh, uh, and I've kind of taken pains to try to figure out how to most efficiently drain these. Um, I, I'm actually going to be doing the actual draining uh, in the Instructional Ocean Monument um, uh, off camera. Uh, so I've created these mock-ups in order to uh, demonstrate how to drain each of the rooms individually. Uh, I'll start with the, uh, the entry room here. Um, this is what the entry room looks like with uh, no openings to adjacent uh, adjacent rooms. Uh, over here, the um, the openings have been included. Um, what I'm going to want to do if to drain the entry room uh, is as kind of a standard procedure that I'm going to be using for all of the different room types. Uh, the first is I'm going to block off all of the avail uh, all of the exits from the room. Uh, to basically create an enclosure uh, that includes here over here, uh, uh, that includes this one, which is the entrance to the uh, uh, to the uh, ocean monument itself. Um, there would be the open ocean out there, uh, and basically it block off everything with either doors or cobblestone. Uh, any uh, vertical exits, in this case, the entry room uh, has can have no entrance to uh, exit to the bottom because there's no room uh, beneath it. Uh, but there could be a, an exit to the room above it. Uh, if there was, I'd want to put uh, ladders um, uh, on the uh, on the hole in order to create a water break. That makes removing the water much more efficient. Uh, for all of these uh, one-unit rooms, it basically we're going to require two sponges. And, and the general rule is to hit uh, opposite sides uh, above uh, the doors. So I, I uh, hit the uh, left door. Uh, on two different sides, and that should clear out pretty much all the water in here. Uh, 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 the entrance room is a little bit different from some of the other rooms, though, in that a lot of the volume is actually taken up by extra prismarine bricks, so there's not actually a whole lot of volume of water in here. Uh, some of these other rooms, when I uh, hit, uh, hit them with two sponges, uh, there will be maybe one or two source blocks of water left over. Uh, and whether or not there's uh, water left over kind of depends on the orientation of the of the monument itself. Uh, so uh, sponges soak up 65 water blocks to a tax cab distance of seven. Uh, and um, that includes uh, water source blocks or flowing water. So uh, the question when you're uh, uh, when the sponge is soaking up the water is uh, when I've reached a certain taxi cab distance and I'm getting ready to to uh, absorb farther water. Which direction do I start with? And it turns out that there's a specific algorithm uh, that's pretty predictable that the sponge uses. Uh, so whether you place uh, where you place sponges, which door uh, above which doors uh, or uh, exits that you choose to place sponges will make a slight difference, um, but it's only a difference of, uh, in, in for this procedure, it's only going to be a difference of one or two source blocks of water, and those can be removed by a bucket. You don't actually have to have another sponge. Uh, so I'm pretty much going to follow the same procedure as I did for the entry room over here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to want to do um, is I'm going to want to uh, block off all of the exits. I'm blocking the horizontal exits with doors. Uh, and I will be blocking off the vertical exits with uh, with ladders. So this creates a water break. Ladders are good for uh, for these vertical exits uh, because they do remove the water. But if you fall inside, uh, it's pretty easy to get back out. So uh, 
Uh, now that it's all blocked off, I would hit opposite sides of the room above the doors with, uh, uh, with two sponges and that should remove all of the water. Uh, I should note that um, in this particular room configuration, this plus configuration, um, this can actually be cleared out in one, uh, with one sponge, kind of depending upon uh, which openings there, there are and stuff. But um, I, I'm going for simplicity of procedure over efficiency here, so I'm willing to sacrifice some efficiency. Uh, so this is a, another uh, single unit room configuration. It has these uh, four pillars with sea lanterns in them arranged uh, in kind of a square here. Um, this room is kind of interesting in that when there is an opening to an adjacent room, uh, part of the wall is gone. So in, uh, in the, your normal room, uh, there's just a two by two section of the wall that gets taken out. Um, here, it's actually a three by four section of the wall that gets taken out if there's, a, if there's an opening into an adjacent room. Uh, so this is going to take a, a, a little bit more to, uh, to block it off. Um, I would put down, uh, well, I would just put down uh, doors uh, all along here. Let's put uh, more doors here. And then I would uh, block off the top uh, with cobblestone. And then do the same thing with the uh, vertical openings. Lock them off with ladders, and now uh, we hit opposite sides of the uh, of the room with sponges above the doors. Uh, I had been hitting this spot right here above the door, uh, and that was mostly due to this particular configuration. Um, the the uh, this specific room generates with prismarine bricks here. The entry room generates with prismarine bricks here. Um, most of the time, I'm actually going to go want to go. Above the um, uh, above the center, so these are the two blocks of the center of the room. I'm going to want to go just to the left or just to the right of that. So hit that spot here, and on the opposite side, hit that spot here, and that should do a good job of clearing the water out of that room. Uh, this is the same room here, uh, except it uh, with a uh, pillar in the middle. If this particular room configuration generates without an exit in the bottom or an exit in the top, uh, this pillar has a chance to generate here, or at least half of it has a chance to generate here. Sometimes it's just half a pillar. Uh, but the clearing procedure is the same. Uh, just block off all of the exits, um, add cobblestone above the doors, and then hit the same spots over here. And it doesn't really matter whether this uh, pillar is here or not. Uh, this room over here is uh, is uh, a much simpler style of room, uh, but again, the procedure is always the same. Block off the exits, both the horizontal exits and the vertical exits. Uh, make water breaks. If there was an exit to the room up top here, I would block that off with wet ladders as well. Uh, and then just use sponges above the door or above the uh, exit to the left or to the right and on the opposite side. Uh, this room, there may be a water source block left uh, if you use the two sponges in this, in this, uh, uh, in this um, configuration. It really depends on the orientation of the monument. Uh, sometimes this will clear out all of the water, sometimes it will leave a, a source block, um, and if it does, just use a bucket to remove the source block. You don't actually have to waste another dry sponge. Uh, this room here is the same as the previous room, but again, it has this pillar here. Uh, if this room generates with no exit in the bottom or the top, uh, this pillar has a chance to generate, or at least uh, half of it has a chance to generate. Uh, again, sometimes it's only half, uh, but the procedure is still the same. Uh, block it off and hit the opposite sides with sponges. Uh, now, this unit is the first of the three units that, uh, sorry, this room is the first of the three rooms that is two units. Um, and in this case, uh, the front of the monument would be this direction, and so this uh, block of prismarine bricks always, um, always generates on this side. So these rooms would, uh, are always oriented uh, with the front of the monument. Uh, in this case, uh, I would start by doing the same procedure. 
block off all the um, uh, all the exits from the room and this one can have uh, two uh, vertical exits one in the bottom and one in the top uh, or sorry uh, two vertical exits um, uh, two, two to the bottom and two to the top. Here's the two in the bottom. Of course, there would be uh, potentially uh, rooms above here uh, that may have exit, uh, and there may be an exit up to those rooms as well. Uh, block all uh, off all of those. Uh, and now we're going to want to hit um, still opposite sides, um, but this time there's a, there's a brick here, so we can't really hit this uh, uh, this brick, and uh, we can't really place a sponge there. So I'm going to place it here and opposite over here so just like that and on the other side I'm gonna place it here and right there and that should clear out all the water maybe there's a source block remaining again can be removed by a bucket um, this room over here is a little bit trickier uh, but again always starting the same uh, block off all of the exits There are potentially six. Um, this is a, this room can is two units uh, uh, comprises two units, so it can have two exits in the bottom, one on either side, and it can have two exits to the top, one on either side. Um, create water breaks for all of those, and then uh, grab the sponge. Uh, now this room is a little bit trickier to um, uh, to remove the water from, and that just has to do with uh, this. Um, uh, this little sculpture looking thing in the middle it interferes with the taxicab distance of uh, of sponges trying to uh, pick up water um, but if you hit a, a uh, if you place a sponge here uh, above this door to the right or to the left and then to the side door on the on the um, on the opposite side so here I placed a sponge on the left of this I'm going to, uh, sorry, on the r to the right of these doors here, and over here I'm going to place a sponge to the left. Okay. Uh, and if you do then the, um, uh, the same thing on the opposite side, so placing a sponge here and placing a sponge here, that should do a pretty good job of clearing out all of the water from this particular room. And the last of the smaller rooms, uh, the one and two unit rooms, um, is uh, this room that has kind of these uh, little holes. Um, it looks like it generated with partial uh, with part of a floor. Um, uh, this room can be a bit of a challenge to clear out uh, for two reasons. One, its height just makes things a little bit more challenging. Uh, but two, when you have an opening, the opening um, uh, uh, on the uh, on either the top or the bottom, it's the same thing. When you have an opening to an adjacent room or a horizontal opening to an adjacent room, not only is it missing these uh, this two by two square, uh, um, but it also is missing parts of the wall. Uh, and if there are two uh, exits of adjacent sides, you'll also be missing uh, this part of the wall right here as well. Uh, and so. Uh, uh, blocking this off can be a little bit more challenging. Of course, you'd want to block off all of the uh, all of the normal exits, uh, but then you'd also want to block off all of the holes as well. And here, I would place um, cobblestone. Otherwise, there's going to be water source blocks remaining there. So just block it off all the way around here. Block off here. And cobblestone and then I need to fill in all the holes that I left so I'm placing a significant amount of cobblestone uh, to block everything off in this particular room uh, but now uh, one, one more now it's all sealed and I can go ahead and uh, remove the water it, it is very open uh, you could of course um, uh, make this a bit easier to clear if you filled in this entire floor but that's a, a bit of overkill uh, instead just hit each of the corners here with a sponge. Uh, that should clear away uh, all of the water in the top. And then just go back, uh, go down to the uh, lower part and follow the uh, kind of the standard procedure. 
Um, so here, uh, here is where the exit would be in these uh, middle uh, middle blocks. So I would want to go up and to the left or to the uh, to the left or to the right, and then on the opposite side, right here. Oops, I forgot my water break in the floor there. So this room is going to take uh, six sponges to clear out. Again, there may be a water block left over. You can just remove it with the bucket. Um, uh, but uh, that is the simplest way I've found to clear out um, this particular style of room. Now, I have been doing all of this in creative mode without any water. Um, it's, uh, it's one thing to uh, show where to place all the sponges in these different rooms. Um, and where uh, where to put them for maximum efficiency, uh, or or at least uh, um, some sort of balance between efficiency and procedural simplicity. Uh, it's quite another thing to do this um, in survival mode, in the water, in the dark, uh, when there are guardians around and you have to fight water currents. Um, so. Um, I, the amount of material that I brought with me in order to drain the interior of the monument uh, includes a hefty amount of uh, furnace fuel for drying out sponges. So even if I don't, even if I use three or even four sponges to clear out these smaller rooms, I still have plenty of fuel with me in, in order to drain the entire, uh, in, in order to drain the entire ocean monument. So I'm not really too worried about being exact about this. Um, it would be nice if I could uh, hit all of these spots appropriately. Um, uh, but that's just uh, not always very practical. Um, still, this is sort of something to strive for in terms of uh, clearing out these rooms. Uh, some of this does make it a little bit easier, although the darkness uh, can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, in particular with this room, um, some of these rooms, uh, uh, well, most of these rooms have uh, sea lanterns where you can identify the room type. Um, the only two that don't uh, are the um, the entry room way over here, uh, but there's only one of these, you know exactly where it is, and it's pretty identifiable. Um, the only other rooms that do not have sea lanterns are this one, uh, kind of the standard thing with a, a stripe of um, a dark prismarine going around it, uh, and this one over here that's very, very deep, this uh, two-unit high room. Uh, this one can be a bit of a challenge uh, when clearing out because uh, when you um, when you come into this room from another room, uh, it can be so dark in here that it, it uh, you can't even necessarily tell what kind of room it is. Uh, and the um, uh, the first impulse that I have is to uh, uh, to lay down a jack o' lantern. Um, but laying down a jack lantern often means I, I place it in the same spot where I would want to uh, drop a sponge, uh, which means that I'm not going to necessarily be following all this procedure uh, in order to uh, in order to clear this particular room out. Uh, but still, um, if you can manage, this is a pretty good way to to clear out this style of, uh, this style of room uh, with six sponges. Uh, most of the other uh, the other rooms really require two sponges per unit. Um, this one uh, requires three sponges per unit, but um, all in all, it's relatively efficient and relatively fast. Um, and that is it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be showing how to uh, drain the water from the larger room configurations. Um, it, it, uh, thanks very much for watching, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please do leave a note in the comments.